Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another vlog. This is a weird one this morning because my kiddos stayed over at Nana and Pop's house last night and I'm in the house by myself, which is truly bizarre and very disconcerting if I'm being honest. They'll be back a little bit later today, but I've just been trying to get some work done this morning. Um, and I figured I would vlog because it's always fun when I can talk to you guys for more than like 20 seconds at a time without being interrupted by a little person pulling on my pants. So I'm gonna vlog today. I'm gonna take you along on my day in life. I'm drinking coffee right now out of this little mug that I made. You can definitely tell it is not perfect. Um, but I don't know if you guys remember this, but like literally probably nine months ago, Matt and I took a pottery class as a little date. Um, and I finally managed to glaze my mug and uh, get it fired and all that jazz. So this is my little coquette bow mug. It's not perfect, but I really like it. I'll show you the other things that we made. So this is Matt's. His throwing was so good. It's a little bit small, but it's like so perfectly symmetrical. He made a little calcifer from Howl's Moving Castle because we're huge Howl's fans. I think it's so cute. I'm so proud of him. And then I had an extra lump of clay. So I just like hand pinched this little like dish it's got a little mama duck and two baby ducks. She's got a little flower hat. I don't know. It's silly and it's fun and I like it. As I'm looking in the viewfinder here while I'm filming, I have to say thank you guys so much for 70,000 subscribers on here. I am honestly so grateful and so mind blown. Every time I hit a new like 10,000 milestone mat, <laughs> blows up balloons and surprises me when I come downstairs in the morning and this one was honestly a shock to me because I haven't been keeping a very close eye on it and so I didn't really realize that it was coming and so I came downstairs and I saw that and I just had this moment of like a holy cow 70,000 beautiful humans take time out of their day to hang out with me and support my family and I just that will never not be weird to me so thank you guys so so much couple other new things around the house. First of all, we finally got a new microwave. The microwave that we had before is like, it was my grandparents' microwave when I was a kid. Um, and so it has lived a long, full life and we've been very grateful for it. But we were having a hard time getting the door open. It was like finally biting the dust. Um, so we got this one. This is from Walmart. And I think this is the prettiest microwave I've ever seen. It's like sage green. It's got this brushed gold handle. It was not that expensive as far as microwaves go. I think it was like 120 dollars so that was very exciting you know you're an adult when you get excited about any microwave and then i also hung up these curtains which you'll have seen if you follow me on instagram because i did it on stories um but basically when i'm filming in the kitchen sometimes i want to hide matt's computer screen because he's got like sensitive work information on it or whatever when he's working from home and so i got these curtains off of amazon and okay that was a terrible job <laughs> doing that but i think they're so pretty and it was such a simple solution. I think it like looks very cottagey. I need to get like some um, tie backs so that we can tie them back on the daily. Oh, and then of course the kids ball pit that they got for Easter. Our playroom is an absolute disaster. So please forgive that. But they've been obsessed with this. Like they are either in this or in the backyard at all times now. Um, and it's so fun. They love it. But the uh, 400 balls that get scattered all over the playroom drive me a little bit mad, so be aware of that if you're thinking about getting a ball pit. I've just kind of been a potato this morning since I've mostly been working on my computer. I am wearing my cutie little merch shirt, which I love. <laughs> but I think it is time for me to put myself together a little bit for the day, and of course, I'm gonna be using my skincare from Typology, who is partnering with me on today's video. Typology has seriously transformed my skin. When I weaned from breastfeeding, my skin went nuts and I had no idea where to start with it. I'll insert a clip here. There's a lot of like acne, scarring, and discoloration. I was having flare-ups all the time and I didn't know what to do about it until I found Typology. You can see it's just so much better. 
What I really love about Typology is they're a French skincare brand that has this amazing free diagnostic quiz. You get to tell them all about your skin, your needs, your preferences, and they will place you into one of 24 skin typologies. So instead of saying you have dry skin, you have combination skin, you have oily skin, you actually get a much more specific plan than that. So my skin type is DE and they formulated a whole AM and PM morning routine for me that has just been so transformative. And I also love that it's flexible. So once my acne kind of calmed down, I found myself noticing that my skin had changed and I was dealing with a little bit more like dry skin issues. So I went in, I retook the quiz and they helped me with the seasonal changes that my skin was experiencing. So I have a few new products that I'm using in my routine and they're making a huge difference. So the first thing that has not changed is this gel exfoliant cleanser with 5% PHA and aloe vera. This is my second bottle, you can see. It's very well loved. This is the best cleanser. It does not leave me dry. Then a new addition to my routine is this Serum Eclat uh, Vitamin C 11% Radiance Serum. And I've really been enjoying this. And then I'm following it up with this antioxidant face moisturizer. I feel like this is gonna be especially good going into summer. And finally, since I don't need a full face foundation and concealer anymore, I'm just gonna use this tinted serum. This also has vitamin C and aloe vera in it. So it's skincare as well as a little bit of a tint. I'm using the lightest shade because your girl is pale. Typology is made in Paris and because of that they have to comply with a lot of really strict European regulations about what can and cannot go into skincare. They actually have several thousand ingredients that are banned over there that are still allowed in the US. So I really like shopping European skincare and makeup because I know that it's going to be a lot cleaner. If you want to try Typology out for yourself it's going to transform your skin and right now they have a special offer for our viewers of my channel. So you can go to the link down in the description description and if you spend at least $40 you get a free mask. It's the P74 Radiance Mask with Yellow Clay and Organic Turmeric. We love a self-care moment. We love Typology. Thank you so much to Typology for sponsoring. If you take their skin quiz let me know down in the comments what your skin type is. Okay, I'm all ready. I have a meeting in about an hour with the sweetest, sweetest Instagram follower who worked in the publishing space for a long time and offered, bless her, to kind of walk me through what it looks like to query for agents and um, try to get my book published. Um, so I was gonna go out and run some errands, but I don't think I have time to do that before. So we'll have to do that after. Um, I wanna go to the garden center because Floret uh, did replace my seeds that didn't sprout and I wanna go get a different soil to try to start them in, um, even though it's kind of late already. But you know what, we're gonna try because the idea of not having a full flower garden, it makes me wanna cry. So we're gonna try anyway. But I thought as I am sitting here finishing my coffee and having some thoughts about motherhood and about this stage of life that I would talk to you guys about them. And I think it's time that we finally talked more in depth about baby number three, because I get this question a lot. Are you guys going to have baby number three? When are you having number three? Are you thinking about number three? And the short answer, which I know is probably kind of disappointing to you guys as well as to me, is that no, I don't think we're going to have a third baby. Um, and this has been something that's like really been heavy for me recently and that I've been thinking about a lot and I wanted to talk about it because I also get the question a lot like how do you know if you're done? Um, and so I thought this conversation was important to have because for me, I am pretty sure that we're done. Like I'd say 95 to 99% sure um, we're certainly not going to try for another baby. We did have one surprise baby and it was the best thing that ever happened to us. So never say never. Um, and I do reserve the right to change my mind. You know, maybe the kiddos will get into school and things will change for our family and we'll feel like we want another one. But I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen for a couple of different reasons. The first one being that our family feels complete. Rowan and Juniper feel like they are the kids we're supposed to have. And I know that if we had another kid, you know, they would fit right in. But I'm not feeling that pull of like, our family's not done yet. Uh, the second one is honestly just like my body can't handle it right now, I don't think. And it's not something where I've been told like, oh, you can't have any more kids. But I am dealing with a lot of health stuff right now. I'm still in the process of being uh, evaluated for Ehlers-Danlos. Um, I'm like waiting back for some genetic test results for that. Um, but even if I don't have that, I have been diagnosed with like some hypermobility issues. And I'm just having a really hard time with my body right now and like my joint health specifically. Um, I'm starting PT and I'm just like, I'm kind of in a lot of pain and I have like other random health things popping up around that and I just feel like pregnancy is not 
something that I should be putting on my body right now. I also hated pregnancy. I don't want to do it again. I always really hoped and wished that I would love pregnancy, but that was not the reality for me. It was really tough for me. Um, body image was really tough for me. The physical discomfort with my hypermobility, which I didn't know at the time that's what it was, but now I do, was really hard. I feel like when I was pregnant, um, I was like, I'm having a hard pregnancy. And people would be like, oh, are you throwing up a lot? And I would be like, no, I just hurt everywhere. And everybody was like, that's normal for pregnancy. And I was like, yeah. That's true, it is normal. Um, however, figuring out that I have some hypermobility issues um, and I actually had like some bones, like specifically like my tailbone shift during pregnancy, which I now have to get manually adjusted. You can guess how fun that's gonna be. Um, like kind of made me realize like, okay, this was something, like I wasn't just being a wimp. This was something like kind of probably more uh, serious than just like regular pregnancy aches and pains, which are already awful. So not to minimize that at all. Also, I feel like we're just coming out of the survival stage. I mean, Juniper's only 21 months old, 20 months old, something like that. Um, and so she does obviously still need us a lot, but like there will be periods now where Matt and I will just look at each other and like we hear the kids playing nicely in the playroom together, like for 15 minutes at a time, we're sitting drinking our coffee and it's just like, we did it. Like we, we made it. Um, and honestly, the idea of doing the newborn thing again, even though I loved the newborn stage um, with how my work has picked up has just been a little bit too much for me. And I'm also really finding an identity outside of motherhood right now. I mean, I'm sure you guys have noticed the kids have been on my channel a little bit less, um, both because I want to protect their privacy as they get older and I'm showing less and less of them. That has always been the plan, but this channel has been more of what it used to be recently, which is like me and my hobbies. And I still talk about motherhood a lot because that's a huge part of my life right now. Um, but I'm also, you know, doing other things like gardening and writing a book and baking and renovating my home. Um, and it's honestly been nice to feel more like myself again. But all of that being said, it doesn't feel good to know that I'm done. Like I get teary eyed on a regular basis. And I know some of you will probably be like, oh, that means you're not done. But I think the turning point for me came when I read something, I think it was on an Instagram reel, honestly, um, and the person was like, whew, I'm gonna get emotional about this. The person, oh, <laughs> this is stupid. No, it's not stupid. Okay, my therapist would hate for me, me for saying that. They were like, it was hard to realize that I don't want another baby. I just wanna hold my kids as newborns one more time. And that was like it for me. I was like, yeah. It's really hard to know that I'm never gonna have a tiny newborn again. <laughs> And then I'm not going to use my Solly wrap ever again. And then I'm not going to have a little baby napping on my chest. And I miss all of that so much. But also, that is not a good reason to have another child. Um, to bring another life into this world. That feels to me a little bit like it would just be self-gratification. Sorry about that. <laughs> Didn't expect to get a mosh, but here we are. And the other piece of it that I've been dealing with, which is obviously less important, but I still want to talk about, is that I feel kind of left behind. Um, in motherhood, like a lot of my friends, especially my content creator friends, are uh, either pregnant with baby number three or talking about trying for baby number three. And I see people's pregnancy announcements and my heart just sings with joy for them. But there is also this little voice that's like grieving, I think, grieving that that stage of life for me is over. And I think that that's so normal. And I think that not a lot of people talk about it because we look at motherhood as this thing that you either have to love or hate. Like you either have to be like, being a mother is the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced in the world, which like it is, but that also ignores a lot of the hard truths about it. But then on the other side, there's the people that only want to talk about the hard part and only want to complain and like honestly scare other people off of having kids. And I think that the truth is somewhere in the middle and that it has to be somewhere in the middle because it's such a complex thing. Of course, it's not black and white. So that's been interesting because I feel Feel that grief um, as I watch other people continue to experience the season of life that I loved so much and that I thought was so beautiful. And then on another like micro level, I'm also watching it affect my work, which is very weird and not something that I thought that I would experience. Um, but it seems like uh, people do not uh, relate as much when you don't have young children. Um, and obviously I would never consider having another baby for content. That is like bonkers. But it is a little bit hard to see my career floundering a little bit and being like, oh, was there, uh, was I of value? Or did people just want to see like the cute little newborn, which like I get. Um, but as I'm sharing more of my own hobbies and like 
books and gardening and everything, I'm noticing like my views go down. And like that's obviously tied to income for our family. So that's stressful because now I'm like, okay, what's the next thing? What do I do? It's like a lot of pressure. Um, to be figuring out on top of all of these feelings about uh, having a baby, or rather not having a baby. So yeah, I have no solution. I have no uh, emotionally resonant line to give you to end this to make you feel better. I just wanted you to know that if you're in the same place as me, uh, it's hard and it's normal, but it's hard. And also if you have stuck around on this channel for me and for my silly little hobbies and my little uh, cottage core life and romanticizing it, thank you so much. I appreciate your support so much. And we're all in this together. We are all dynamic human beings and things change. And sometimes it's hard, but I think often we come out the other side of it and we go, okay, everything happened the way that it was supposed to. And I'm glad, even though it was hard at the time. There we go. <laughs> All right, let's tackle a little office clean before my meeting, because frankly, I <laughs> am embarrassed of how messy this is because I have too many crafts for my craft doors. Maybe this is the next thing I'll declutter. Um, so they always end up up here after I use them. I've got the kids' Easter jelly beans that I've been hiding from them. And then also, I feel like I'm just a little dragon that likes to hoard cute, silly things. And so I always just have the most fun little things on my desk. Matt made this, isn't that so sweet? Um, and then I made these two. Thank you, Amanda Esco, for the uh, inspiration. Um, but it does get to be a little much if I don't like <laughs> deal with it from time to time. So I'm gonna tidy a bit. This is what I like to call PR purgatory. Um, this is where all of the fun PR products go um, before I have had a chance to film with them because I make myself wait to put them in their places until after I filmed with them as like a little reward. Um, but right now there's also like all this extra random stuff. Like I have these that I thrifted for an upcoming DIY I wanna do for the kids' mud kitchen. So it's like, I need them to film, but I don't know that they really need to be here. So maybe I'll tackle this first. Okay, that is slightly better. Um, I do still feel like I might need one of those little wooden shelves with the cubbies, you know, that you get for like a kid who's really into rocks <laughs> and geology, just for all of my little knick-knacky things because I just couldn't bring myself to put them in a drawer because they bring me so much happiness and joy. But yeah, it's, it's looking better. I also just, I need to figure out what's going on with my craft storage because this is just not the best. <laughs> organization. Oh, rip. Poor fiddle. Having a hard time. Okay. It's time for my meeting. Hello. Can you see me? Oh. Yes. Can you see and hear me? I can. Yay. Thanks. This is, yeah, the first time I've done a Zoom meeting in a long time. Me too. I had to re-download the app because I was like, oh, I think my phone offloaded it because it's been a while. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, Hannah, if you happen to be watching this, I literally can never thank you enough. That was the most informative thing ever. Uh, we spent an hour and a half chatting. She gave me some wonderful tips. And I'll be honest with you guys, I am so pumped up right now to work on my manuscript um, that I am going to do that until my kids come home. Um, and that is not the most interesting vlog content. So I think what I'm actually gonna do is split this day in the life up into two. Um, so we'll start vlogging again tomorrow um, with the kiddos and I will see you guys then. friends. It is the next day now. The kiddos are home. Um, I started revising my manuscript yesterday and I was like so pumped and so excited. And then I looked at my own work for too long and I had a little MTB and a little spiral of like, oh my gosh, everything I've ever written is crap. I hate it. I should just throw it away. Um, so that wasn't super fun. Um, but this morning we went to a play date at a friend's house. It had so much fun. And now we're up from naps and quiet time. And where are we going to go? I don't know. The garden center. Yeah, the garden center. Yeah, you want to go to the garden center? Oh, are you going to take a picture of me? Maybe I 
want to bring two, okay? So we do have some popping up from that second batch of seeds that I started, which is good. And I just got a whole new greenhouse kit for these ones because I didn't want to take any chances. Now, Mr. Rowan, what I need you to do, I'm going to take this box, and this box has these little, like, circle things in it. And I'm going to have you put one little circle thing in each of these holes. And you got it? that. Honestly, they're a little big for the tray. Can you help me? I'm going to spread them all out so there's one in each and the hole is on the top. I want to help you water. Climb. Climb? Yes. Thank you, Jimba. Need you to sit on your bottom, please. How many times today have I told you to sit on your bottom, girlfriend? Like a million? Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Okay, so as you could probably tell, my mistake in that is that the pellets were too large for the trays. Um, so I just put them in water to soak and I think I can squish them in um, after. I was gonna do like another soil, but then I was like, you know what? I've been doing the peat pellets and just ripping them when I put them in for the last three or four years and it's worked every time. So just decided to keep it simple. So while I'm waiting for those to puff up with the water, um, I'm gonna do something kind of silly. I have this gorgeous apple tree that has so many blooms on it, um, but the companion apple tree that we bought for it <laughs> is a stick. Um, so last year you guys told me to do this with my pumpkins um, and it worked. So I'm gonna try it again where I am using these blooms that my neighbor gave me from her apple tree um, and I am going to hand pollinate a lot of these flowers. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do, hopefully we get apples. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Twenty twenty four garden, hopefully. So I've got three six packs of these petite florets. I have three of these Zinnia Dawn Creek pastels, and then two each of the Celosia Vintage Rose, the really pretty yellow Cosmos, and the Apricot Cosmos. So Let's hope that everything goes well this time. I did save some seeds this time in case it doesn't work out, but I'm seriously hoping that it does because look at how pretty all of those would be together. That's home. Welcome home, baby. Hi. Hi. Guess what I did all day? I know what you did all day. Tell them. I'm nervous to talk about I it. I spent maybe four hours, three yeah. or four hours today reading Megan's book and I finished it. And I can't wait to tell you all the thoughts that I have about it. <laughs> what was your what was your overall? Was I it really garbage? Liked it. No, I really liked Are it. Are you you're not just saying it? It felt you love like me. I was reading that guitar. Oh, 
cry. <laughs> Out of everyone in the world, you have been the person that I've been the most nervous to have read it, but also felt the most safe to give it to. I've made if you that makes wait any sense. so long to read it. Well, Sorry. I've kept you pretty busy with the bathroom right now. This so. is true. Yeah. Yes, I finished it. I have thoughts. Okay. I, well, I'm going to end the vlog so I can hear his thoughts because I'm dying and I don't want to spoil anything. We also for need you guys. to talk about the adult scenes that you wrote into there because you've been holding back on them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, I'm going to go crawl under a rock and die. Um, I love you guys lots. Thank you for watching. Bye. I follow only gold, golden, golden, golden things.